Have you ever walked into a room and you could tell that the people in that room before you were just really going at it? What told you that there was just a problem in that room? Your discernment. The energy, your energy was at one level, the energy in the room was at another level. That's no different. You can, you can access this spirit of discernment in everything that you do. Everybody who says you cute is not really thinking you cute. <laughs> some people, <laughs> some people talk with game. They gonna mess around, I'm gonna mess around, get kicked out the club. But you can't believe all of the game that you hear. You must heighten your discernment. Everything that sounds like is good for you is not good for you. As a matter of fact, sometimes when folk bring stuff to you, you can rest assured that it's good for them and them alone. But if your discernment, if your spirit of discernment, if you don't have your energy attuned at such a level that you can see the low level of vibration and what they're bringing to you, you will drop down to that level. See, now, when you get down on that level, that means you got to deal with it where it is. You know what I'm saying? If, 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 you, if, you get, if you get down on that level, then this is where you'll be. Now, here you are made to be the head and not the tail, but you all down here on somebody else's level because this is what he or she brought to you. You have to know how to have a spirit of discernment that will enable you to rise above the level of whatever is appearing to you, especially when it comes to you and it's not for your highest good. You have to be willing to stand in your spirituality. You have to be willing to stand in your divinity because you're really bigger than a lot of what comes to you, but it comes to you to help you exercise your spirituality. If you ins <laughs> you hear me say this all the time, if we insist on being human, then we must experience more humanness in our spiritual journey. But Reverend Coleman said that you are a spiritual being living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual laws and at some point you have to give some attention to your spirituality and stop depending on your humanness. Your humanness can only take you so far, and so wisdom is intended to help you come out of your humanness. See, when you tap into the intuition and inspiration of God, it brings you out of your humanness. The next thing that you need to work with is that of evaluation. Say evaluation. evaluation. What evaluation does is it gives you the ability to evaluate the facts. You never have to evaluate the truth. You never have to evaluate the truth. You only have to evaluate the facts. That which is showing up right now, but if you approach it from the right level, you'll realize what it is. Nothing. When Solomon was confronted, when Solomon was confronted, and he was, he was, he was supposed to, Air quotes. He was, he is said to be the wisest man of scripture. Now you can't tell by everything that he did. <laughs> right? A lot of what he did was human. But when these two ladies came to him and they were both wanting possession of this baby, Solomon in all of his wisdom said, well, I know what to do. Just cut the baby in half, and you'll take a piece, and you'll take a piece. Now, when they got ready to cut the baby in half, the mother said, just let her have the baby. Because the mother would never harm her baby in such a way as to, she would rather see it be with somebody who's not his or her mother than see it be cut in half, to see it killed. 
But, uh, but sometimes our own child, our own ideas, when we don't expose them to our wisdom, we wind up cutting them in half based upon what we say about it, based upon how we feel about it. But you have to speak life into your dreams. You have to speak life into your possibility. You have to speak life into your potentiality. Your child is going to grow, but you have to be willing to give it time. And when you take it before the seed of wisdom, you have to be wise in how you handle your potential. See, you're spiritual, you have potential. You haven't, even, you haven't even scraped the surface of who and what you are. You haven't even begun to see the blessing and the bounty of God as it is intended to unfold, unfold in and through you. The ideas that come to you are meant to bless you and to be a blessing to this world, and you are perfectly situation, perfectly suited to handle that. You've been through what you've been through so that you can help somebody else know that, girl, you don't have to do that that way. You don't have, you don't have to go through it like that. Huh? Sometimes, sometimes you suffer. Mm. Sometimes you suffer for somebody else. But when you realize that life is a continuum of oneness, you realize that your suffering and my suffering is a collective suffering, all for the glory. All for the glory. So now, there's one last piece that I want to talk about with this wisdom. In the Greek, wisdom is, is referred to as Sophia. It's, the, it's a feminine, it's a feminine aspect. It's a feminine, see, it's, it's a, there's, a, there's a power, there's a power. There's a power in the feminine nature. Sandy, there's a power in being a woman. Mm. There's a power, there's a power that's resident in, in the feminine energy. There's a power that's potent with the lady, with the, with the feeling or feminine aspect of the soul. In the Greek, it's called Sophia. Now, you may not, you may not understand wisdom as Sophia, but you may understand wisdom as so long. <laughs> when in, 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 in our text, Jesus said that, that, or the text says that everybody left, but Jesus stayed in Jerusalem. See, sometimes wisdom will, will let you stay back in peace when everybody else is leaving to get back to wherever it is they came from. Sometimes you got to just be willing to say, so long. See, the wisdom of God will tell you when it's time for you to stay and when it's time for you to go. Sometimes you don't jump off the cliff because everybody else is leaping. Sometimes you just stay put until you hear the voice of God, the wisdom of God, and you say, now it's your turn to jump. But until it says it's your turn to jump, you ought to be standing right there firm like a huge oak tree. I'm not moving until the Spirit of God tells me to, but you got to let other people just be, so long, I see you. You might not understand wisdom as Sophia, but you might understand it as so what? You might understand it as so what? So what that they say it's a recession? So what your client base has dropped? So what you don't make what you used to make? But so what is a way for you to know that that is one what, but there is a new what that's ready, willing, and available to you. It is not the end. Sometimes when you get to, end, to the end of your rope, you just got to be willing to tie a knot and say, I'm going to hang here. I'm going to hang out. I'm going to hang low. I'm going to hang loose until it's time to do something else. So what? They were looking for him. Jesus said, I don't know why you're looking for me. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Where you at? So what? So what they can't find you where, you where they think you ought to be? They shouldn't be always be able to find you where they think you ought to be because where they think you ought to be has nothing to do with where you really should be. You've got a place. You've got a purpose. There is a plan. And if you are stuck where folk think you ought to be, who's doing what you ought to be doing with your purpose, your place, and your plan? They ought to be looking for you with a flashlight because they can't find you. You so busy doing your thing. Stop being, stop being so common. Stop being so easy to find. Stop being so easy to point out. Stop being the, low, the loudest one at the party. Sometimes you just got to get in the silence. That's where your power and strength is. 
So you might not understand wisdom as Sophia, but you might understand it as so what? You might not understand wisdom as Sophia, but you might understand it as so be it. Jesus said that I must be in my father's house. I must be in my father's house. And see, you can't be in your father's house without being a part of your father's house. You have to, balcony believers, you have to sometimes be that which you want to be, but that's not yet showing up. You have to be willing to go in when you're young and when you're early in your maturity and say, so what? I'm going to be it anyway. One of the things that we do too often is we stop before we even get a chance to get started, but you can't be it if you won't take one step toward it. You got to be willing to get your swagger up so that you can walk in who and what you are. How do you be it? You be it by putting it on. Don't be afraid to put your good on. Don't be afraid to walk around in it. Don't be afraid to start it up. Don't be afraid. Don't think about what other folk gonna think. They are salty because you doing your thing and they ain't doing theirs. That's, but, but even that's not your business. All you gotta do is be what you were created to be. Be who you were created to be. Be the biggest and the baddest at it. And then they'll come around because they'll come back to where you are. They came back to Jerusalem to find him and they said what you doing here he said I'm doing just what I'm supposed to be doing I'm teaching and I'm preaching and I'm sharing the good news and I'm listening and I'm learning and I'm giving it back and all you got to do is be willing to be who you were created to be because when you stand in wisdom you can't help but win in the game of life God bless you